Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno. Well, we are flying high this evening at the BFI London Film Festival as we attend the gala screening of High Rise. Congratulations. This is a, a, a brave... Um, a brave performance, I think, from you. It's a daring script, isn't it? So I just wondered whether it must have been thrilling for you to go and, and break your boundaries. Yes, entirely. That's what I'm always chasing. Um, I, uh, I just, I found Lang a fascinating prospect because, he, because in a way he's, he's uh, the eyes of the audience through the building and he has a detachment which is professional. He's a doctor, he's a physiologist, and so he's someone who um, is able to look at the human body and be and be detached about the chemicals which govern our our impulses, um, which usually, you know, which usually encourages to make mistakes. Um, and and I found that moment basically that he's in this this sort of detached bachelor trying to escape real life, is challenged to engage um, with his internal chaos and with the external chaos of the building. And I en I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the complexity of that. The other thing that, that um, your character says is about wanting a, a clean slate. Mm. Um, and I just wondered what backstory you'd given him, because he is so mysterious, isn't he? He is mysterious. Um, he's recovering from a family tragedy. Uh, I don't want to... It is mentioned in the film, so I'll al allow people to discover that. Um, but I think there is something of... of he, he starts the film in a very empty place, and there's a hole in him somewhere. He feels he's grieving privately. And uh, the high-rise is is presented to him, sold to him as, as, a, as a, an escape. And it, in the book it says he, there was something attractive about living in a gondola of a Ferris wheel suspended 300 feet above the ground. Something about cutting ties to, to the earth and to society. Um, but what the book shows you, what the story shows you and the film shows you is that you can't stay detached for too long. You know, life will, life will pull you into its chaotic vortex and, and challenge you to, to, to define yourself and that's what happens to Lang. The story is told from Dr Lang's point of view but the film feels very much like an ensemble. Is that how, what you wanted to create? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the book has got a lot of characters, and in the book's told from three different perspectives. So, yeah, it was always going to have to be an ensemble to see the, how you know all the the elements of the the building were coming together. Um, the music as well was something that that really kind of struck me too. It really kind of heightens our senses as an audience. Was that something that you wanted to create? I'm glad it has done that. That's what you always want to do, to be honest. You know, yeah, of course. I mean, it's it's a marriage of sound and vision film. You know, so the the music's a massive part of it. And talking about marriage, you, you collaborate with Amy, your wife, she writes, and then you direct, and then you both come to the edit suite together. Yeah. Um, is that a, a really nice collaboration for both of you to bring that vision to life together? Yeah, you know, like in um, Snow White, when all the animals come in, and like the birds, and they all have... No, it's not like that. It's <laughs> Definitely not in this film. No, it's, it's how you imagine it to be. And of course, at leading man Tom Hiddleston. What was the sensitivity that he brought to the part? Yeah, no. Tom. Tom is an incredible actor, you know, and he's um, incredibly dedicated and, and and does massive amounts of research. Takes it all super super seriously. And yeah, um, it was a, it was a real treat working with him. And Jeremy Thomas, of course, this has been his vision for 30 years. What was it like working with him and helping bring that that this dream to life? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't like to think too much about how long it had been going on because it'd be too scary. But yeah, it was uh, you know he's a he's a you know is he around? Oh, he's a living legend, you know. So you can't you know. And when I I remember the first time I went to his office and it's like he's got the typewriter from Naked Lunch and and you know Sid James signed pictures on the wall. So it's, it's incredible. Yeah. What a wonderful sort of character study yeah, this film is, isn't it? Oh my God, it's amazing! Like just the opportunity to play a character like this ever since I think. I must have been about 14 when I decided I like, right, one day I'm going to be like kind of glamorous and 40 and have my hair done and wear lipstick and heels and be like, darling, if you can't see it, I can't tell you. And then reading Jane Sheridan, I was like, oh, oh, it's her. And she's got an Afghan and she's got a transistor radio and she's done up to the nines all day long and will not take her sunglasses off. And it was just the dialogue and Amy, Amy Jump's writing is so extraordinarily good and funny and grotesque and ridiculous but beautiful and poignant and real and too many adjectives no, but the thing is as well is that what I noticed all of these women they weren't they weren't pushovers were they they were strong women in their own way that's Amy that's Amy Jump I mean she's a phenomenal writer um, 
but also when you're working with someone like Ben, it's a, it's a completely new thing for me to be on a set and for everyone to be allowed to kind of be together. Normally you have, when you've got more than one woman in a, in a, you know, in a, in a story, you've got like, she's the clever one and she's the pretty one and she's the dangerous one. But Ben's kind of man enough to understand that we are people, very much like men are people, and you can have more than one of them in a one room at any one time talking about things that aren't necessarily other men. <laughs> He really gets it, and so does Amy. So, you know, we didn't ever have to fight for, like, well, my character's like this, or my character's like this. You know, it was like, you just were. Now, your character feels like the most flamboyant one as a piece. Yeah, I thought so. Did you not? I think he's quite flamboyant, but I think he's a... Uh you know, I, uh, I, there, there were some photographs of my, my, I have an ex-girlfriend and her uncle was a very famous male model in 1975 and it was all very the slick back hair and the, and the, and the handkerchief and the tie and very bright colours and feeling rather important and I ripped him off and that's really actually, I just stole his look and put it in this film. Amazing, this film feels very experimental, is that how you saw it? I think it's experimental, yeah, and it was, we shot it in a quite an experimental way. There were, you know, Ben is, <clears throat> he's such a lovely director to work with. It's not just about what the words are on the page, it's about let's do it. We did one take, for example, after the party scene, where he said, right, now everybody do it as if you've taken two tablets of Mogadon. And a three minute scene was extended into a 15 minute scene. Whether any of that's in there, I don't know, but he loved it. So it was experimental in that sense it was fun doing it and he had you know, he, the, the way that he approached it was mischievous and naughty and playful and all the ways that actually directors should approach material i'm good i'm really excited i didn't realize that i would be in leicester square i'm really nervous but i'm good yeah well you're, you're in good company here tonight yes. it's with a great film so it's sort of there's nothing better when you see the film that you've made kind of be you know have that much attention and support so no it's great and it, it's it's a really interesting film isn't it I mean once you, you yeah. what what were your first impressions when you first read the script I loved it I mean I love JG Ballard as a writer um, but it's so dense and it's so complex that I was a little worried I thought well this could either translate really well on the page according to who adapts it and I think it's a book that people have tried to adapt for years and years and years and years and Amy wrote such an amazing script and then with Ben I think it was the perfect combination so I was just really excited I thought yes obviously and it's like I could even just do be a runner and serve you coffee I'll do whatever <laughs> what I like about the film as well is that there are so many diverse personalities in this isn't there what was it about the character that you were playing that you that you wanted to bring to her the fact that she's in the middle of everything I loved that like she has she, she's sort of no place at all you don't really know what floor she's she's on and she's always in the supermarket so she gets a bit of everything and I really like that and that sort of half oh I have to work here this is really I'm really you know that first job that we've all hated um, I like that I like that in her and was it lovely as well being a part of a project as you said it's taken such a long time to get this to the big screen it must have been a real passion project for everybody yeah, yeah it really felt like that and it's great because you you know I mean you see films that are made and you think how we what okay fine that's fine um, so to have you know a film like this and also with Ben to see you know him working with actors like Tom and Sienna and Luke Evans Jeremy Irons it's it's huge it's it's great that he has that recognition and, and you know yeah looking very dapper thank you very much and I went with a bit of a roll neck a bit of a 70s look for the film well, yes I was gonna say it's very in keeping isn't that's, it that was the plan that was my thinking yeah you know, it's all about attention to detail. It is, it is. All devils in the details, they say. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and there is a lot of detail in this film, isn't there, there as is far in, as the characters are There is indeed. It's a, it's a fantastic novel by J.G. Ballard that Ben Wheatley has just done a fantastic job on. It's about a group of people from different backgrounds who moved to this high-rise that is the sort of height of glamour in the 70s. And instead of it being the, the dream they thought it'd be, it turns into a, a complete nightmare. Isn't it interesting in a world where we live in, with a technology, mm. I, it does actually make you question what would happen if we all lost our power and we didn't have access to the technology either? 
I think it would all break. I dread to think. I dread to think. <laughs> it turned out like that. Probably high rise. It, watch high rise, and you'll find out. And you'll find out. Yeah. Did you? Know, did it interest you as well with just how primitive these characters became? Um, I think it's. I think also it's about the idea of humans being isolated and when humans are on their own and there's a lack of community spirit things you, you don't you don't see humans as humans and, and everyone it all becomes about number one and for themselves and I think the fact that it happens at the at the beginning the dawn of, of Thatcherism is a, a very prescient point in the film um, so it's very much a very uh, a very contemporary story so it, it still holds water you know? so, uh, to me it's a basic instinct of survival Unfortunately, it is, and it's the world is not a fair place, and it's absolutely brutal. Unfortunately, there you go. What did you take away with you in particular, Augustus, from working on this? Um, just a, just a sense of fun. It was a really unlike the movie itself. It was a, it was a real community community vibe. We were all in it together. We shot it out in Belfast in this in this essentially this sports complex that they'd made into this incredible studio. It looks amazing. Uh, and it was sort of just a really sort of everyone was in it together. So it was a really fun it was just fun and, and such a talented group of people. Absolutely yeah. including yourself. Oh thank you very much. Oh, and what a turnout we've got yeah, tonight. I know oh, it's unbelievable. I know. It's we quite can't. scary out there. <laughs> now Tell, talking about scary this script it seems um, it, it's interesting, isn't it, really? It's a great script. It's, um, I mean, I don't know if you read the book, but uh, J.J. Ballard's novel, High Rise, is a very dense, uh, interesting book. Um, it's fascinating, and it deals with um, a time that is very prevalent to today, in today's society, to do with a lot to do with class. You know, where you've got the lower and the middle and the upper classes, and it was pre-Thatcher. So you've got, at the time, you had Labour governments with Harold Wilson and Callaghan. So it was just before Thatcher came into power. So there's a lot of stuff bubbling up there, and it's a really interesting time. And, uh, and it's still, yeah, I think it still mirrors a lot of today's society and it's it's quite a controversial film I think. I think yeah. as well what, I, what I've noticed was that you know the reliance of technology within you know it's one of the selling points of the, of the flat yet when that's not available mm -hmm. then all hell gets breaks, loose. breaks loose and yeah. and it's a bit like how we are now isn't it? We're it all is. Everyone's fighting for their territory and uh, that's what happens in the in the high-rise where they're all fighting for, for their territory and the, the lower classes the middle and the upper and uh, all hell breaks loose and it turns into a riot of hedonism and narcissism and violence and sex, drugs and the whole lot. So yeah, it's a it's a fascinating film and a great book. And with regards to your character, what what was it about him that you wanted to play? Well firstly is to work with Ben again, because I worked with Ben it's my third time with Ben and I love working with Ben. Um, and it was totally against type really. I'm playing a newsreader. Um, and he's very much in the sort of ilk of Reginald Bosenket, who was a drunk uh, newsreader. If you look him on YouTube, he's fluffing his lines because he's been on the source, you know. So he's very much sort of in that sort of area and a little bit of Alan Wicker thrown in there and a little bit of uh, Frank Boff. So it's just a fun part to play and uh, it's kind of like a carry-on movie sort of role, but darker, you know. So it was just fun, yeah. And uh, I get to wear nice suits and, yeah. And have sex with lots of ladies. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say more than that, can oh, you? No, exactly. <laughs>